Well, hello, kids. In, in just two weeks, we'll be back together, or I guess we'll be together. Since I haven't been there, I can't come back to see you unless I had you previously, which I have a few of you. Let's talk about classification of matter. Basically, what we're talking about is elements, compounds, and mixtures. This should all be review for you. This is something you've done probably multiple times, so hopefully it will all come and go quickly. Matter, the definition of what matter is, is anything that has mass and takes up space. It's made up of particles. The smallest particles are single atoms, and atoms that are bonded together are molecules. Pure substances are made up of one type of particle, either all the same molecule or all the same atoms. For instance, if we're talking about gold, a pure substance would be all gold. If you throw a copper in there, it's a mixture now. It's not a pure substance anymore. Same thing for water molecules. Even though we have hydrogen and oxygen, because they're bonded, they have this has the same set of properties as this guy. So they are all the same thing. These are pure substances. So if you can look at something and they're all the same throughout, it's a pure substance. When we talk about pure substances, we talk about elements. Elements are made of one type of atom. So again, my example up here with the gold. They're made of only gold atoms. Sometimes elements can be made of two of the same atom. So hydrogen would be an example. Anybody remember what we call the atoms, or the atoms, excuse me, the elements that are made of two atoms? If you remember, they're diatomic, and I can't spell. Meaning two atoms. And they spell out the funny word, Hofbrinkle. Okay, that would be hydrogen, oxygen, fluorine, bromine, iodine, nitrogen, and chlorine. They always have two when they are in their elemental state. Okay? Oxygen can be made from just an oxygen atom. Those are called radicals. You guys have heard of antioxidants. Those are like pomegranate. You eat that, it gobbles up any of these oxygen radicals. That's not the elemental state of oxygen, though. But that is the cause of ozone getting destroyed is chlorine radicals, half of a chlorine. Oops. All right, so elements are made of one type of atom, okay? All high oxygen, all hydrogen, all gold, what have you. A compound are two or more different, oops, elements that are bonded together in a new substance. Take water. Water is made of two hydrogens and one oxygen. Hydrogen gas is flammable. If you've ever heard of the Hindenburg, the Hindenburg was a big blimp and it was a Nazi blimp, and it exploded over Elmhurst, uh, Massachusetts, I think, because it was filled with hydrogen instead of helium. Hydrogen is a flammable gas. It will burn. Oxygen, of course, is required for burning. If you have anything that's going to burn, it's going to need oxygen. When I was a kid, we had gone to Wichita for my great-grandmother's 90th birthday. We came home. I opened the refrigerator because I had some things, some snacks to put back in the refrigerator. 
And I noticed that it was all kind of gray and murky in there. My mother came out. We looked at the refrigerator. We realized we'd had a fire in the refrigerator motor. And the fire had burned until it used up all the oxygen and couldn't burn anymore. Um, if the fire had had oxygen available, if it had been on the outside of the refrigerator instead of the inside, our house would have burned down while we were in Wichita. So we were very lucky there. Um, you, uh, refrigerators are airtight. The old refrigerators that used to have a handle on them, you had to take those doors off if you threw them in the dump because people would get in them and get locked in them. So at any rate, oxygen's important for breath. And the refrigerator saved the house because of breath. Oxygen's important for burning. The refrigerator saved the house because all the oxygen got used up and the fire went out. All right. But if you put those together, hydrogen and oxygen, you get something that puts fire out. So flammable, flammable, but all together we put it out. So we have a new set of properties. They're different from the elements themselves. All right, physical properties. Physical properties are things that describe the substance. For instance, color, uh, what phase it's in, solid, liquid, or gas, and along those lines, things such as boiling point, things that you can use to identify that are based on what the substance is. Color. Um, physical changes involve no new substance being formed. So if you have ice, the ice melts, it's still H2O. It's just not in a solid form anymore. Chemical properties describe how a substance will react. For example, flammability. And interestingly enough, sometimes they'll say in flammability which to us sounds like it won't react, but that is actually old chemistry speak for something that is will burn. Uh, flammability. Uh, reactivity. A chemical change means there is a new substance formed with new properties. Here's an example. Iron plus oxygen will rust and make iron 3 oxide. Iron's a solid, the oxygen's a gas. We have something new that's red colored and it's all over the your bike frame or something like that. Alright, mixtures. Mixtures are two or more substances that have been physically combined. They have the same properties that the components making them up have. Kool-Aid is a perfect example. Kool-Aid, you have a pitcher, and if you just put the powder in from the little packet, you just put that powder in, it's going to turn the water red. It's still going to be water, but it's going to be turned red. If you drink it without putting any sugar in, you'll also know that. It won't taste good. But if we add sugar to our Kool-Aid, then we can taste the sweetness from the sugar. Salt added to water, salt water. Here's a picture of a 24 karat gold. 18 karat gold, which is a mixture of gold, silver, and copper, and 14 karat gold. Most jewelry is 14 karat gold. This gives gold a little bit more strength. 24 karat gold is very soft. I had a ring that was 18 karat gold 
that my mother had given me. And one time I got really mad at my sister and I slammed my da hand down on the table and I flattened the ring. Because 18 karat gold is fairly uh, soft compared to 14 karat gold. All right. One method of separating a mixture is distillation. That's when you have two or more substances, at least one being a liquid, and you boil it. And for instance, if you have salt water, and you boil it, the water molecules will come off and leave the salt behind. Distillation simply means you're, bo you're using different boiling points to separate substances. Filtration, you're all familiar with, because you may have filters at your house, a Bria water filter or something. Filtration is when you use, somehow use a permeable membrane to catch larger pieces. Larger pieces will, will catch in the filter and then other parts will go through. So if you have muddy water, you can run it through a filter and catch the bigger pieces and have less muddy water. You wouldn't probably want to drink it though. Here are some examples of elements, compounds, and mixtures. Hydrogen gas is an element because they're all the same. Water is a compound. Both of these are pure substances. Air is a mixture. Here's the hydrogen that's pictured over there. Here's a water molecule. I have no idea what molecule that is, but it is a mixture of different elements and compounds. Actually, air is like 70% nitrogen, 29% oxygen, and then trace amounts of everything else. CO2, water, argon, things like that. All right, that's all for now.